Yes, this chapter we rat trap. What is a rat trap, literally? It's a device to catch rats. It's a simple device with some mechanism to entrap the rats. On which, uh, on what principle does this uh, device work? The principle that the rat will be enticed or it will be enamored by some edible. It will come to eat and it will be entrapped. This is the mechan. This is the principle of the rat trap. Okay, there happens to be a hook in the trap inside. And the hook is made in such a way that the moment somebody would touch the hook or anything hanging to the hook, the trap will close. And anyone who's ever entered the trap or that device, that person or that thing will be entrapped inside of So the mechanism or the principle is greed. Otherwise, you cannot ever, you know, trap a rat. But unless and until the rat becomes greedy or is enamored by the temptation, it will never be otherwise entrapped. So greed makes rat gets trapped. Right? And the poet, the writer Selma Legerlof, she has used this rat trap as a metaphor to convey an idea that the whole world, in this world, you know, this whole world is like a rat trap. And in this rat trap, we, the human beings, get trapped because of our temptations, because of the fact like we become greedy or we get enamored by what seems to be tempting. So the, the temptations of life make us entrap in the world of obsessions in the world of desires in the world of desires or obsessions whatever otherwise if in our life if there is no desire if there is no obsession if there is no distraction our life will be so simple we would be all happy the only purpose of our unhappiness or of sorrows is our desires and uh, extreme desire make us become obsessed and then we become unhappy and the reason for our becoming unhappy is not that uh, uh, there is no choice, but we make the wrong choice on our own. What wrong choice we make? The wrong choice of becoming greedy. The wrong choice of being getting tempted towards our uh, temptations. If we talk about ourselves, suppose I say uh, talk about student life. Student life is otherwise so simple. Okay, student life has just two bother about one's studies that's it but the temptations there are so many other temptations and because of those temptations what are temptations something which seem to be good but actually they are not good and no one forces you to go to those temptations and you get enamored by those temptations because of their own tempting nature and you get tempted, you get enamored because of somewhere the weakness in us. And what that weakness is, that we, by nature, we get tempted towards something which seems to be pleasant. But actually that happens to be only a distraction. And the moment we get distracted from our main path, we suffer. Okay, otherwise the road is very clear. We all know that. You all know that you are students, your exams starting, and there is no other purpose for you people to write now. You don't have to do cook food. You don't have to wash dishes. You don't have to earn money. Okay, out of thousands, there might be five children, 10 children. But if we, if we talk about the general stream of life. Okay, children, life is so simple. Nothing to do, only studies. But that also, there also we get distracted. Distracted because we get enamored by the temptations. And those temptations make us do what we don't have to. And the moment we become distracted, that very minute, the story of our unhappiness starts. The story of our sufferings start. Now the point is that who made us go to that side? 
we ourselves so the writer is only pointing out in the story that this life is full of distractions because the world is a big rat trap we are the rats we are like the rats though it's a very disgusting comparison okay we may say that the writer doesn't think uh, uh, if the rat, it's a rat trap seller himself who is it talking like this that the world is a big rat trap and we the human beings are the rats and we get enamored towards a rat trap because we get tempted by what is inside that is a simple bait inside the rat trap okay bait is actually an eatable for the rat to attract him inside it the bait had never uh, the bait doesn't say okay rat come here the rat itself goes inside with one's own choice and the moment the rat goes inside the rat touches the bait and the moment it touches it gets enclosed and it doesn't get any way to come out so the writer the rat trap seller says similarly it is so for the human beings the world with all its beauties the world with all its you know glamour the world with all its luxuries is like a rat trap the world is like a rat trap with all beauties with all what you can say is tempting and we the rats the human beings the moment they feel tempted towards those luxuries or what they forget their real purpose of life they go to the they go inside the rat trap and start enjoying the moment they start enjoying those luxuries or beauties or pleasures that very minute they get entrapped in this world of rat trap and are not able to come out of that so if we talk about uh, uh, literally like how we human beings get entrapped in this world can you explain like what is the actual meaning of this thing how can we say that we get entrapped in this world we find it very difficult to come out of that uh, luxuries means whatever is uh, is is, uh, is making us happy we forget our main purpose of life basically what's the main purpose of life the main purpose of life is basically seeking salvation if we talk about from spiritual point of view okay actually in the end if we talk the mention the philosophy then philosophically man's purpose in life is to seek salvation salvation is what salvation is uh, freedom from the cycle of life and death because life otherwise is nothing if we don't realize its ultimate aim but because the because of uh, various distractions in this life in the form of various beauties or luxuries we get entangled in this very life and we forget the very real purpose that we have to seek salvation we forget it and we become attached with this world a lot okay we are attached with this world how do we how are we attached with this world we love our family we love our friends we love our luxuries we love the money we have we love all the materialistic things we all it's not only you or me or anyone else it's true with everybody but anyone who is able to shell out from this kind of stream of life remains alienated from the from those kinds of things and remains a free person okay freedom is when you have not bound yourself to one thing we are bound okay we do. like it's not something if we talk about philosophically so the writer here just wants to say that the moment we become distracted from a real purpose of life we become entrapped we don't we are not able to find out the we are not able to find out a way immediately it takes some time okay so let's see what this chapter is about here in there is a story of a person the rat trap seller is a hero of the story okay the hero of the story should have been somebody who has who had been you know uh somebody doing something nice with nice thinking but here we have a rat trap seller who is the protagonist of the story and that rat trap seller uh his job is to sell rat traps and how does he get the rat traps how does he make the rat traps 
they are by begging or getting the raw material from the industries or somewhere he makes a rat traps then and sells them but what income he gets that's very less and he's not even able to meet to uh, both end square meal he, he is not able to get even the basic needs done so though he makes rat traps sells them and in order to sell the rat traps he has to you know move from one place to another for the whole day even then he is not able to fulfill the very basic needs so then what he has to do he has to even do begging to meet to both ends apart from begging he even has to do stealing he is a single soul no family member nobody to uh, fend at home you know he has nothing no responsibility only he himself even then he is not able to manage his own affairs by just selling these rat traps sells steals and begs even then to her so because of this kind of you know miserable life he has become you can say pessimist and he uh, you know when he would be like moving from one uh, place to another to sell the rat traps he becomes very bored on the way his life is so monotonous otherwise you can make up and in this monotonous routine mundane life you know he would think about life like he would think about life being like a rat trap it's a very important question which always is asked and children never are able to answer like how did he come upon the idea that the life is like a big rat trap so whenever he would be plodding along the roads to sell the rat traps and during his monotonous trips when he would have nobody to talk to for the whole of the day he would talk to himself about the fact like this life is a rat trap he would observe other people falling in the rat trap because of they are getting tempted towards a beauty luxuries or the distractions got it so he would like to amuse himself by saying like this so why would he compare the world to a the rat trap because he found that the people they would get distracted and they would fall prey to the rat trap and this idea would amuse him he would seek happiness out of this why because so far he was he was not a rat trap so far he had not been entrapped in the rat trap he was free he was free to move about he was free to beg he was free to steal had no obligation he was enjoying freedom so far got it so far he himself was free minded he would only see other people doing the being entrapped in the world of rat trap and he would amuse himself with these ideas but one day he himself will be entrapped and what will entrap him simple greed one day when he would be trudging along the roads it would become very dark and at that time he had taken actually he was going by a forest it became very dark night fell and he was still in the forest he he started feeling very hungry very thirsty but no where was some shelter to be seen so he was on the verge of dying there and all of a sudden he heard some sound coming from nearby he went to that he followed the direction uh, he found you can say shelter somewhere in a cottage the one the person who uh, opened the door for him happened to be a uh, happened to be let me tell you the story only in brief the person who opened the door was also alone nobody lived with him so that person opened the door with a smile basically this rat trap seller had never ever met a person who uh, who was so hospitable towards him rat trap seller with poor you know dress the rat uh, the rat traps in hand okay a beggar kind of person so no one was ever generous with him it was for the first time that somebody opened the door and welcomed him and he was also very happy and when he went inside that person the one who uh smiled welcomed him with a smile was a crofter 
so he uh, took him inside he offered him tobacco he offered him porridge to eat then even he played a game of cards with him otherwise if some beggar comes to our home at night to seek shelter do we do like this do we give him a vip treatment no one i guess but he was given a vip treatment by that proctor so he should have felt very indebted to the person and that proctor was alone he had no wife no children so he had he had actually saved some money that proctor out of excitement even went in front of him towards the pouch which he had kept on the window sill he brought that pouch opened it and showed him see i have got this money i have saved this money out of the creamery which i sell does do we ever show our saving to somebody like this but he showed why do you think he showed him that money because he was always alone and when he found somebody with him he was so happy that he shared even his secrets that is human nature we always want to share our joys as well as sorrows with somebody so he shared and at this time you know this rat trap seller should have been should have realized that the person is so good to him okay everything was fine at night in the morning that crofter actually uh, used to be a worker at ram's jewels iron mill some times ago when he was young but now he had left that job at the mill and had started uh, selling creamery out of the cow he had a cow he would uh, milk the cow and he would sell its cream in the market uh, shitish don't talk so he would uh, is he talking okay so he would sell the cream in the market and he would get some money out of it and that money he had saved and that much money he had showed to the to the rat trap seller okay now in the morning the crofter woke up early in the morning because he had to take care of the cow and all so the rat trap seller also had to wake up and secondly the crofter had to go out then the rat trap seller also felt like even i should go now if the owner is going then the the guest should he was not even a guest so he also felt like leaving the house he also got up got ready with him and both of them left the cottage together and then the crofter locked the cottage and kept the key at the window sill from above right and both of them left the cottage together the crofter went to his own way and this rat trap seller he went some distance came back to the cottage he remembered the that money which he had shown him the previous evening bait okay that was a bait now for him so so far this rat trap seller was free could go anywhere could do anything you know at least his life was not very happy but at least he was without any fear without any you can say responsibility okay so he remembered that money and he knew that it was kept at the window sill and at the window sill only that proctor had kept the key now he went back picked up the key okay from that window sill he picked up that pouch took out all money kept the empty pouch back and went so the moment he kept that 30 kroners that money in his pocket now he started realizing he like i can't now go by the main road main route because he thought like may now the crofter when he would come back in the afternoon he will find his pouch empty he will inform the police and the police will start finding him so instantly the moment he had stolen the money he started becoming tensed tension started coming in his mind and he was now afraid that now the police will be after him so instead of going by the main route he took to the shortcut through the forest okay again in the forest and now he went went by forest and uh, evening fell and the forest route is always very long so it it was evening it started getting very dark but there was no way out of the forest and the worst thing was that he forgot the way in the forest he tried his level best to apply logic like he would mark some place that uh, from here i am starting and he would go off and after half an hour or half, after one hour he found that he was still at the same place it was getting darker it was very cold month 
and uh, he did not have anything to eat with him he had nothing to drink now he started starving and uh, because of the cold and all he started feeling that he was going to die then he heard when he was uh, like he knelt uh, on the ground he was he started waiting for his death even then he heard some sounds coming from a nearby place by hook or by crook he reached there and he found that it was a ramstow's iron mill it was a ramstow's iron mill it was the same place where that crocker whose money he had stolen he had worked in this mill about many years ago now he was not working there but he had worked there so no link now of the crocker with this mill but i'll tell you because the world is round somewhere or the other the connection comes up so sometimes we feel that no one will be able to catch me no one will ever be able to see what i'm doing but uh, the way of life is such that's why the story's name is the rat trap so because he had done something wrong when you've done something wrong you are not easily you cannot be easily uh, you know exempted from what you've done anyway he reaches the iron mill inside he saw that uh, the worker uh, the blacksmith was on his night duty though it was night it was the coldest month of the year even then in the mill the night uh, nightly shift was going on why because the owner of the mill that person was very particular that even the work should go on smoothly at night because they were they had to import, uh, export some iron and all so they were very particular of, about work even at night so this person rat trap seller he went inside and he saw that the furnace was uh, on and uh, the worker blacksmith was doing his work he just asked him like sir can i uh, stay here for the night that blacksmith didn't even look at him why because rat trap's personality was such people didn't even bother to look at him but there was one person who had bothered to take care of him who was that that crocker but what he did with him he ditched him he deceived him okay now that blacksmith didn't even bother to look at him and this rat trap seller was used to these things he was used to being avoided by people and he didn't even mind and he went near the furnace and he lay there and because he was very tired he was feeling very cold earlier now in front of the furnace he slept there and then then by chance the owner of the black uh, of that mill he comes on a nightly round for nightly inspection so when that owner comes he uh, the moment he comes and he finds somebody sleeping there he comes near him and uh, he thinks that he has seen that person he removes that uh, rat uh, rat trap seller's hat and uh, and and he mistakes him to be his old friend the owner of the mill such a rich, rich person he thinks that he had seen this person and he mistakes him to be his old friend uh he tells him to he wakes him up and uh, tells him like uh, oh nils are off come with me we'll go together to our home so it's christmas we'll have to celebrate together but this rat trap seller because he had already stolen that money now he was afraid that if he would go to his house from there if the rat traps if that crocker would have complained then police will catch him from his house because when you are wrong you are always afraid okay so now he did not want to he did he just wanted to go on his own because he had got enough money with him now 30 kroners was not less for him and he thought like why should i take a like why should i take trouble of going to somebody's home and being caught there why should i go he told him ki no no sir i can't go this or that but one thing is here he did not tell him that i am not your old acquaintance i am not your old comrade still he remained quiet another mistake now okay and that person the owner of the bill he went back then after some time uh, edla came that oh, that uh, uh, what now that master's daughter edla she came to take this man to their house edla was a uh, uh, quite a, a mature girl you can say and uh, she told this man that uh, it was christmas and they wanted to celebrate christmas together the man refused he hesitated and edla told him 
And Edna, when she was talking to this man, she was able to make out two things. She was able to make out like this man is very afraid. And, and she was able to make out like he might have either done some stealing and the police might be after him. Though that man had not told her anything. And secondly, she also got to know from his mannerisms that this person cannot be her father's acquaintance because he was illiterate. So here I always say that education shows through your mannerisms. Okay, you don't have to tell anyone that you are educated. The moment you stand somewhere, the moment you speak something, it shows. Okay, educated people, education doesn't have to show the certificates or degrees. So that Edla was able to make out like that person could not be the captain who was being mistaken by her father for this man. Edla was able to make out like this person is not their acquaintance, yet she uh, asked him to come to their house. And she even comforted him by saying, sir, if you'll come to our house, no one will bother you. You can stay uh, indoor all alone. No one will interrupt you. And you just enjoy the Christmas food with us. Let us have a spirit of Christmas today. And uh, after celebrating Christmas, you may leave any time without telling us. No obligation. Okay. So uh, that person, you know, that uh, rat trap seller found this thing good. And moreover, Edla was so kind and generous woman, he could not say no to her. He followed her. So now when they reached the house, uh, this very person, you know, listen. Okay. From this point, we'll pick up the story on Monday. And you people read this story. Is that clear? 